Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we have brought a pattern to you brought to you by Leisure Arts and I can't believe I'm knitting the updated edition and we'll be working through one pattern teaching you how to read a knitting pattern. We are going to get started on a basic hat. Let's find it in our book here. And this is the basic hat we're going to be working on. And when you want to get started on a hat, it will um, obviously um, usually be on circular needles or double pointed needles like this. But this particular pattern notes that it is going to be using straight needles. So I'm going to show you what this is going to end up looking like. What I'll do is I'll take you through how to read the pattern, how to cast on, how to do the, um, the ribbing, which is uh, on the brim part and then the basic body, and then it's actually going to get seamed up along the sides. So if you'll forgive me, we'll switch between a couple of different things here, but um, I wanted to go ahead and have this ready for you. So let's get started on walking through the pattern. If you're following along in your book, it is on page 50, and you can get your copy at the link below. Be sure and click the link for, I can't believe I'm knitting the updated edition, and Click down below and we'll have that for you. Okay, so we're going to turn to page 50 and look at the basic hat. And all the patterns are um, going to lay out the same with each public, uh, publisher and, or designer. And you're going to start with, obviously, the tile, title. Uh, this one is laying out the different sizes available in this pattern. So you can knit up all these different sizes here. Um, also, it's going to have a note about the instructions and um, and then you've got brackets and things like that. So let me just kind of talk you through that. So um, say you wanna knit one of these sizes, um, you're not really sure which one to pick, you can also look at the head measurements. So if you're able to measure the person that uh, you are working on this hat or if you're going off of a chart or something, um, you wanna look at these measurements here and we've got the inches and you've got your centimeters here. Um, size two to four, this is gonna be um, ages here. And then down here, um, we've got adult size seven, eight, nine. So uh, I'm going to go for a size two to four today. I'm just making the smallest one for tutorial purposes. The um, 16 and a half inch diameter is what I'm going for. And uh, I'm gonna follow all these main directions. However, it gives you a note here that the instructions are written with the children's sizes in the first set of brackets, uh, braces, which is looks like this and then the adults sizes in the second set of braces the instructions are easier to read if you'll circle them all um, so if you want to take a pencil or I suggest a pencil not a pen in case you make this again in different sizes but circle all the numbers that pertain to your size before you start so get your pens out or pencils and um, write on that and then you're going to um, if it's only got one number given, it's gonna to apply to all the sizes. So, um, okay, so we're gonna get our materials together and it's stating that the yarn amounts are for the total needed for a hat and, and it ranges from 190 yards um, or 174 meters for the two smaller sizes, which is up here. And then, um, and then it goes up to 220 yards for the next two and then 250. Uh, for the two largest sizes. So um, if you're not sure and you're in kind of the medium area, go ahead and buy um, enough for the 250 um, or a little bit more. It's always good to get extra and you um, want to make sure they're all in the same uh, dye lot. Uh, when working in stripes, you can divide this amount uh, in half um, because this pattern you can actually, we're not, we're not going to do color working today, um, but I've got a um, a variegated color of a yarn which is going to change color for us and look like stripes but we're just going to do the basic solid one today our hat is striped every two rows beginning at the body so um, once you knit up your brim and the color that you want you are going to start the two row system and alternate so they've got the two rows of blue and then red and then alternating thereafter. Now the pattern is going to talk about what type of weight of yarn. Uh, this one's using a, excuse me, this one's using a worsted weight number four. Um, this one is uh, three ounces, 197 yards, and uh, which is 85 grams or 180 meters per ball. 
And then you see these brackets that they were talking about up here. So this first set of brackets is the children's sizes and the second set of brackets is the adult sizes. And um, then you want to look at um, the first number if you're gonna do the one that I'm doing. Um, so they're just basically they're in order. So take this and translate it vertically to this chart here. Okay, so if you are working on the, the adult size or maybe even like, okay, I'm gonna do the 10 to 12 here. So we're gonna go and look at this. That's gonna be number two in the first set of brackets. Okay, and now we need straight knitting needles and we need size five or 3.75 millimeter and a seven, uh, or which is also four and a half millimeter or the sizes that you need for gauge. And then it's gonna give us the gauge here in a moment. Uh, markers, um, stitch markers if you need them, uh, yarn needle, and then um, with the larger size, and, and the yarn needle is for darning and, and, um, and pulling up the seam, so that's what that's for. Gauge. The gauge is um, the measurement in a swatch to obtain your size. Okay, so that's going to be, what they're not listing also here is that you're going to need a tape measure. Now with the larger size needles in the stocking net stitch, which is your main stitch here, so they're calling out which stitch, you're going to get 20 stitches and 28 rows in a four inch piece. So across is the 20 stitches in four inches, um, or you can take 20 stitches divided by four to get your um, stitches per inch, and then 28 rows up and down vertical in four inches or you take 28 divided by four and that's your stitches per inch uh, or rows per inch. Okay, now this section is gonna talk about ribbing. And when we do the ribbing, um, we're going to use the smaller size needles here. So smaller size needles, you go back over here, we're gonna be using a size five. And then we're gonna cast on, here's those double brackets again. I'm going to the very first one. So if I have a pencil, and I want to um, keep up with it, I'm gonna circle that one here. And then it says cast on 78 stitches very loosely. So I'm not gonna pull tight uh, when I cast this on. Work in knit one, purl one, ribbing for, again, my size is this one, a one inch, um, or this little slash here is if you're working in the metric system, you're going to go down here and it would be two and a half centimeters. Okay, so the ribbing is just a series of knit one, purl one, and repeating over a continuous row, and we're going to do that until it reaches one inch. It's not going to tell you how many rows to knit, it's just a measurement, so you do need your tape measure. Then the body is, you're going to change it into the larger size of the needles, work in the stock and net stitch which is just the the knit stitch all on the front so that means you're going to knit the front and purl the back and then until the body measures uh, three and a half inches if we do this first one or four inches for the second four and a half for the third so this first size anyway um, and then this second set of brackets so this is the inches again when you've got this little slash here then this is the second set with the centimeters and then that's from the cast on edge so you want to um, measure from the beginning so your measurement would be from here which is the cast on edge to the point right here so whatever this size is okay you're not measuring from the start here to the start here okay and uh, let me give you my sample. And now that we're talking about this part, I'm just gonna show you um, that. In case you're not gonna knit it along with us, I want to show, go ahead and show you that now. So I have got, this is my ribbing, and I've got my tape measure out. And I want to measure for my cast on, I've got one inch here, or uh, this is three centimeters, okay? And so I've got, um, I actually did it longer because I just I just wanted the ribbing longer. I, I remember I didn't actually measure that one. Um, two and a half um, centimeters is what I needed and um, this is um, one inch here. You know what, let's measure it again. Maybe I've got my brim a little bit longer. 
Uh, technically, it's a couple, it's two stitches over, so it is a little bit over one inch. Okay, I was wondering how I got three inches out of three centimeters. See, <laughs> that's what happens when you measure. Okay, so now um, I want to check out um, my body here. Now it's saying that I want to measure from the, um, let's see, from the cast on edge. So I'm going to take out my tape here, measure along cast on edge. Okay, so I've got um, four inches here. It's not quite four and a half. Um, so I've got a little bit longer of a hat uh, than I need. So if I've knitted too far, I can frog or go back uh, and unknit the stitches or I can continue. Um, I'm just going to continue with the way it is. Um, but we've got um, three and a half or four or four and a half in those sizes. So those are all um, within the parameters of having that nice small hat. Um, the people in my family tend to have bigger heads. <laughs> so if I'm knitting for a baby that I don't know about, if I want to give them room to grow, I don't usually, I don't try and keep it to the smallest dimension. I usually go a little bit bigger. So this is going to be fine for me. Okay, we're back to the instructions for the body. And we've changed the larger size needles. We've worked in the stocking net stitch until it measures our length. And then um, we're going to end by working a purl row. Okay. And then we're going to do um, the top shaping. So we're going to have an outside purl row out here. And then we'll start um, knitting together and doing some other things here to um, shape the top of this hat. So um, it's going to walk us through row by row. The main thing that you want to do is make sure and um, check out all the techniques before you get started. Um, do you, if you see in the pattern here, it's referring to different figures on different pages. So make sure and refer to those if you're not familiar. So we're going to walk through here. We've got row one and it's knit. Um, and then you're going to knit the first one. If you decide um, that you see these brackets, you're going to, I'm going to knit 10. And then I'm going to slip one as if to knit. And then I'm going to check this if we need it. And then we're going to knit two together. Uh, and then this page is showing us that technique. And then we're going to pass the slip stitch over. And it tells you how to do that on this page. And then we're going to place our marker. And it shows you how to place the marker. And then, uh, like some patterns actually won't show you those techniques, they'll assume that you know them. So that it, this may be missing from yours if you're working on some other pattern. And then now we're going to knit this in mine, it would be 10. And then we'll slip one as if to knit. Then we're going to knit two together again, pass the slip stitch over, see how the these notes are now missing. So normally you would see the rest of it um, without all these bolded areas. Okay, so pass the slip stitch over, and then we're going to repeat from the star. See, this star is nice and dark here. Other patterns might have it as an asterisk, and it's not as easy to see. So basically, when you see this star, you're going to go back to this star and then repeat this section here until you hit it uh, again. And you repeat again until it says across 66 stitches. Okay, so we've gone 66 stitches and then we're done with row one and then we would move on. So then you keep following the pattern uh, that way, make sure. And you can also keep track of it by just putting, simply putting a little pencil check mark by the row or marking out certain parts as you go along. Okay, and then we're gonna cut, <clears throat> we're gonna cut our yarn leaving a 20 inch tail and we're gonna thread a needle and work back up through the remaining stitches and then pulling closely. So. You can use a weave seam in the book and it actually will show you here. That's what's really nice about this book. It gives you all the techniques that you need. All the tools are here as far as literature is concerned um, for what you need for techniques. And if you want, you can add a pom-pom and it shows you how to make that too. And this design is by Marion Graham. So let's get started on actually knitting up this pattern. Okay, this pattern calls for us to start with number five needles or 3.75 millimeter and that's for all of the hats in here and 
if you decide that this is not getting your gauge, then you would go up a size or down a size in your needles. So if it's too small, you want to go up a size in needles. If it's too um, large, you can go down a size. And that has to do with the tension of your hand and also with the, the yarn that you choose. So uh, what we're going to do is go over how to cast on. And I know how to cast on, but I want to show you the book. So they refer to casting on uh, in here. This is page two. And we're going to walk through this. Now I'm casting on 78 stitches, but if you want um, to cast on, let me tell you how many you need for your size. Okay, so if you want to make the 16 and a half uh, or 42 centimeters, you're going to cast on um, 78 stitches. If you want to make an 18 inch or 45 and a half centimeter hat, then you want to cast on 84. If you are making the 19 and a half, cast on uh, 90. If you want to make uh, this adult size, uh, the head measurement is uh, 21 inches or 53 and a half centimeters, cast on 102. For a 22 and a half or 57 centimeter, cast on 108 stitches. And for a 24 inch head measurement, we are going to cast on 114. Okay, so we're going to cast these on very loosely, and we're going to do the slingshot method here. This is a long tail cast on. We're going to pull out a couple of feet, I'm pulling out off camera a couple of feet of this, well, I think I pulled out three or four feet uh, of your um, yarn. My tail is over here, and coming from the ball is over here. Um, the way I do it, they, they show what you do is you pull out your length and you make a circle and then you stick your uh, your needle up through that to get the slip knot. Do you see how they've stuck their needle up and then pulled that on? Um, another way to do it is um, I wrap my yarn around my finger and I pull the back over the front slightly and then pull that back one, the new back one over the tip of my finger and then I just put my needle in place. Okay, so casting on, we're going to do the slingshot cast on, and I've got my tail in my on my thumb, and I'm going to put my uh, working yarn uh, from the ball coming on uh, my hand, my finger side. Okay, so what I want to do is grab the yarn in my hand and put my fingers through, and my thumb is the tail. So think tail and thumb both have a T. So I'm going to put my tail around my thumb, and then I'm going to put my finger around the part that's coming from the ball. Okay, so now I want to um, hold this the slip knot with my finger, with my index finger, and we want to go to the thumb, so the back side of my thumb here. Keeping it on there, I want to go around to the um, to to my finger and pull that through, and then now I'm going to push it through this loop on my thumb and then pull my thumb out. Now I can also tug on that yarn and get that nice and tight. So let's see if we can show you that again. Okay, so we've got um, one stitch casted on plus our uh, slip knot which does count as your first stitch. So I'm keeping the tension by holding on to it down here. I put my fingers through and now I'm going to go around my thumb through the finger and down through that or that loop there and pull it through okay let's see if we can try that again I'll move the book out of the way all right so I want to hold on to my yarn because to keep the tension you can hold it in your fingers here put your fingers through the thumb is on the tail side of the yarn and the finger is holding the other now I want to slip the needle through the side of my thumb through the middle where my finger is and then down through that loop there. See how that's connected straight like there like that and then let go with my thumb and now I can just tug on that yarn and I just use my thumb there to finish the job. Okay, let's try that again. Thumb, finger, through, pull. Thumb, finger, through, pull, thumb, finger, 
through pull. Let's get a little closer. Thumb, finger, pull it through, and let go. See? Outside of thumb, inside finger, through the hole, and let go. Outside thumb, through the finger, pull through the hole, let it go. So continue casting on your number of stitches. Be sure and refer back in the video. Rewind to find out your number. Uh, and if this if this cast on is harder for you and you want to try the knit cast on where you don't have that long tail and, um, and you want to do that that way, I have it to where you basically will do the knit stitch and uh, knit in such a way to cast on. So check out that video and I'll put the link down below as well. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this one is because I want to do it exactly how the pattern is um, so that you can see that. Okay, so finish casting on the rest of your stitches and um, pause your video and we'll meet back up. Okay, so we've casted on our number of stitches and I'm just making mine as a gauge swatch. I've actually just got 28 stitches on here at the moment just to show you how it works and then we're going to um, I'm going to bring over the larger piece when we get to that point uh, so I've got um, my two tails here and before I move them over to the other side you just want to identify which one is the tail so I, I know that this one's the tail so I'm going to go ahead and just hold it back and we'll flip this around and now we've got our working strand coming out from here so we're going to knit one purl one and I do have a link for a slower video down below if you'll click on that I've got a regular knit stitch video and then a slow uh, motion version of that video uh, so we're gonna go in here I'll just do a couple of them kinda slow and then the rest of them will go at normal speed so the knit stitch we're going to take our our right hand needle and stick it through um, Make sure you've got this, the right size of needle because this the five and the seven are very close. So we're going to put these uh, this through. We're going to wrap it around and then pull through that loop. And then when we pull that through, we want to definitely slide that off the left hand needle. Now when you're going to make the purl stitch, we want to push the yarn from the working behind that right needle and up through the front of your work here. Now we're going to take the right needle and put it underneath the left needle through that first loop so from going from right to left through that loop and keep it on the front run your working strand around the front of that needle around the back of the needle and then push down and through and then pull off that loop from the left so now you've got two stitches you're gonna now switch back and put your yarn to the back of your work put your needle through and wrap that around and pull through again to make that knit stitch and then pull it off let's, let's do the purl one more time put your working strand to the front put your needle in wrap it around push it down and through okay and then let it come off okay and so just make sure and alternate your working strand back and forth and also make sure your stitches fall off. Um, if you're new to this, you may have to keep counting your stitches at the end to make sure that you didn't make any new ones by not letting it slide off or you have a yarn over. It's very easy to do when you're going back and forth to accidentally pull that through this way and then it becomes this empty stitch. So uh, if you need to know how to unknit your work, let's uh, go ahead and go through it. So if I pull this up closer, you might be able to see it better. Let's say you made the wrong stitch. Let's go ahead and show you how to uh, tink or knit backwards. It's knit spell backwards. And uh, you're gonna take your left needle up through the old stitch that's over here, okay? And then you can slide off the one on the right and pull your yarn off, okay? There's a couple of ways to knit backwards, but that's just a really simple way to do it. So um, I want to do a purl for this next one and then push it through and we'll continue in the knit purl knit purl until the end pause your video and we'll meet you back in a moment okay i just finished my last stitch which should be a purl and then we're going to take it and turn our work 
and you'll see now that the tail end is trapped to the back of here. If it's too long, go ahead and cut it. All right, so we're going to continue knitting our Knit One Pearl One. Make sure that you have an even number of stitches uh, because if it gets off, then uh, you won't be making a rib stitch. You'll be making something else. So the last stitch was a purl, so that means the front side is going to be, or well, actually, this is the wrong side. We're going to knit this side, and then that will end up making the columns of ribbing. So go ahead and knit this first stitch, and then we're going to switch to the purl. Knit that and switch to the purl after. All right, so continue with whatever your pattern says to make um, make the ribbing. Let's look at that. So if you are working on the first hat, you're going to go, um, so this these sizes here in this order that we did earlier, you're going to do um, one inch here or two and a half centimeters um, for any of the three sizes here. And then uh, for the adult ones, they're going to be one and a half, one and a half, and one and a half. So you're either going to knit one inch or one and a half inches. If you're wanting like a long brim, then you could make it even longer to, to fold up. Um, so that this is um, this is for this type of hat. Uh, obviously, you can make changes as you see fit. Okay. So uh, pause your video, continue knitting your sample here where you're a hat and we'll meet you back in a moment when it's when that ribbing is done okay we're back and we're going to measure our ribbing here it may look like a bunch of knits on the front but when you pull it apart you'll see that it's actually kind of stretchy and you're going to have those pearl bump rows in between and let's go ahead and measure we've got one inch and it's about two and a half here um, be sure and count this top stitch is uh, your stitch here. I've done, I think, about seven rows. Okay, so now you want to pick up your uh, next needle, which is a size seven. You find that nine, uh, number seven needle, uh, which is a four and a half millimeter. And we're going to um, put it in our right hand. So this is the five, and we're going to move this over and grab the larger needle. And my, my sevens are actually over here, so I'm going to put on an eight just to show you what a bigger stitch looks like. So you're going to have the bigger needle. See how um, it just looks so much bigger. I'm just This is for camera purposes, so you can really get a feel that we're going to a different needle. So we're going to follow the pattern. It says change to larger size needles. Work in the stocking net until body measures and then whatever your length is. So this is, this is the part where y'all are going to stop and mark your reference. So for the first size, we're gonna do three and a half. For the next is four. The next is four and a half. Then in the adult sizes, we're gonna do five, five and a half, and six, and that's in inches. Four centimeters, if you're doing that, um, we're gonna do nine centimeters, 10 or 11 and a half for the kids, and for the adults is 12 and a half, 14 and 15 centimeters. So that's measured from the cast on edge from this part here all the way to the top here. And then we'll end um, by uh, working a purl row. Okay, let's get started here. So we're going to put in our needle knitwise and knit this stitch here, pull it off and continue on your row. And then I'll uh, meet you back when you're done. Okay, we're coming up on the end of the row here and you might be wondering why are we switching to a bigger needle i'll tell you why <laughs> because uh, the designer has uh, decided to go in a bigger needle so that your ribbing um, this brim will be smaller so it's slightly smaller than the hat so it's a nice uh, tight hat it's not going to be too loose fitting Okay, so now that we have the right needle uh, filled and done, we're going to flip it over and it becomes your new left needle. And now we're going to work on the wrong side of your fabric. And I'm going to take my number five needle and set it aside and grab my uh, larger needle. And now we're going to purl across to get the back of our stockinette. Make sure your working yarn is in the front. Put your needle in purl wise. 
wrap it around and pull that on through and continue to leave your yarn up front since we're not switching back and forth it's all done the same way all right so continue the purl stitch all the way across pause your video and i'll meet you back in a moment all right, so I have finished purling across and I flipped it back over to my left. And when you spread your stitches out, you'll notice that your brim is going to be, um, it may be right along the same size, depending upon how tightly you knit, um, or it may cinch in a little bit. And that's to be, um, that's to be expected. It's not going to be really severe, but this is going to be stretchy. So um, now that you've got that going, what you want to do is continue knitting until Again, it reaches the desired amount, and you're going to end it on a purl row. When it says, uh, end by working a purl row, let me get my sample and show you. So I finished, so my working strand is on the left here, and I finished purling across this way, okay? So when the strand is coming from the left, and you're looking at the back of the work, and it, it looks all purl bumps, see these are the purl bumps, and then when we flip it over, we have the pretty knit stitches on the front. So again, I did not do color working in this. This is the yarn that I'm using. It happens to be a, um, a Deborah Norville. This is the, it's a different uh, colorway than this, but uh, this is the everyday, um, this is from Premier Yarns, Deborah Norville collection, everyday anti-pilling, the soft worsted. This is acrylic and it's a number four. And if you want to find out about your gauge and everything, um, test knitting a swatch uh, this size um, or a little bit larger, um, you can start measuring and making sure about your gauge here. And I'm stopping here to let you know about the gauge and to click on the links below and I will have an area that's talking about making a gauge swatch and uh, measuring and you could change your yarn up or down or your needles up or down or both to um, make it appropriate for what you want. So if you really don't like this worsted weight and you want to do this tame hat in a bulkier weight, then you can figure out the gauge and figure out the math. If you need, if you want a bulkier weight yarn, then you'll need less rows and less stitches going across in order to get um, the same sizing here. So continue on and pause your video and we'll meet you back in a moment and continue. When starting your pattern, the um, the things that you want to know is do I know these stitches and if I don't go ahead and stop before you begin your row and find out just in case you need to set up something differently. So if we want to know what uh, knit together knit or K2 tog is which is knit together uh, knit two together let's go to this page here and find out. So we're on page 22 figure 14. We're going to look at uh, knit two stitches together which is uh, this is a abbreviated and knit two together figure 14 here and they're showing you that you're going to stick your needle in here in these two stitches and then we're going to wrap it around and then um, oh <laughs> I flipped over this one I'm sorry and we're gonna wrap our yarn around and unknit as usual so basically it's the same thing you're just sticking your needle through two stitches at once so it's, it's pretty simple so let me Pull this together here and we're going to um, continue this pattern so row one we're going to knit and again on the size if you're in the kids we're going to do a 10 uh, so knit 10 or uh, 11 or 12 inches depending upon your size in the adult size it's it's 14 15 or 16 so I'm going to knit 10 You knit however many stitches you need. Pause your video as needed. All right, now let's work to the pattern again. We've done that, and now we want to slip one as if to knit. So all we're going to do is go in like knit-wise, and then slip it. Okay, so that's that's all we're doing. We're just skipping that stitch. Okay, now we're going to knit two together like we just talked about. There's one and there's two. So we're going to go through both of them. 
sometimes I pull on my fabric if it's not working for me and then yarn over pull it through all right and then we're going to pass the slip stitch over right here it's saying um, PSSO figure 15 page 22 so let's go back there before I actually show you I want to show you in the book what it looks like so we're going to pass the slip stitch over and it's showing you very clearly this is a great book shows you putting the stitch in through this loop this is the one that we slipped over and then you're going to lift it over the top of this right needle here so let's do that right now okay so this is the stitch that you just put together and we're going to lift this one up and pass it over that's it so now that we pass the slip stitch over then we're going to place a marker and it'll show you on page 20 how to place a marker and I'm just going to show you how and then we're going to knit and it's, it's actually the same number that we did before so I'm going to knit 10 um, so place the marker and then I'm going to knit 10 Okay, I've got a marker you can use one that uh, is closable um, removable or not um, or an earring or whatever you want to use so I'm going to place the marker on my right needle Okay, and then I'm going to knit 10 as usual. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, and ten. Okay, so we've got ten stitches on here between the marker, okay, and the end of our uh, knitting. And let's go ahead and look at the pattern again. Okay, so we've done that, and then we're going to. Um, come down here and it says slip one as if to knit and then knit two together and pass the slip stitch over so we basically did what we just did before so we don't need to refer to the other part so we're going to slip all right and then we're going to knit two together so one two coming through both at the same time and then now we're going to pass the slip stitch over so grab that stitch lift it over okay and so now that you've done that you're going to repeat from this asterisk to this asterisk or the star to this star so now we need to get another marker and place it and repeat repeat across the entire thing and we're decreasing this row so continue and I'll meet you back as soon as you have finished your row Okay, so this is the back side of our work here. We finished and flipped, I flipped it over. So I've got all my markers on here and you will have reduced your number. And to um, look ahead, it'll say um, that's what you're redu you've reduced it to. So I was at 78, I reduced it to 66. There's 11 stitches in each of my sets here because I had knit 10 and I reduced two stitches down. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have 66 stitches. Row two is telling us to purl across and slipping the marker so let me show you what that looks like we put our working yarn in the front which it's already ready for us I'm going to purl these stitches okay so we're coming to right before where our marker is and we're just going to take it and slip it over here and that's it and keep your working strand in the front here and continue purling on that row pause your video and i'll meet you back in a moment okay, i finished with row two and i'm on to row three this is another decreased row and it's going to be different than row one what we're going to do is we're going to knit within three stitches of the marker and what this looks like is we're going to knit until there's three stitches in front of the marker so let's knit those and 
and that's eight for me, but yours is gonna be more than that if you've got a larger hat. So here's my marker, and if you wanna notice, I actually put as the first marker that I put down is a different color than the rest of them. It's not necessary on this project, but it is a good uh, little tip if you're doing circular knitting and you need this many markers and you wanna know what is the beginning of my round, um, you can do that, or you can do a separate marker to show the very beginning stitch of your round. So, um, it says that we're going to um, uh, knit to three stitches of the marker and then we're going to slip one as if to knit. Okay, that was easy. So we slip that one. And then we're going to uh, knit two together and pass a slip stitch over just as we have done before. So we're going to take these two, making sure to get both stitches, knit those together. Okay, and then pass the slip stitch over. Okay, so now we've decreased that and just to get a closer look at what your decreases are looking like. See how you can see all those stitches are combining now to make your decreases. And now we're going to slip the marker. Okay, so now we've um, slipped the marker and now we're gonna do the same. We're gonna knit two within three stitches of the marker and then slip one as if to knit knit two together pass a slip stitch over which is what we just did so we're going to repeat between those until um, three times more and then knit across to the last th three stitches so uh, let's continue on and um, in this pattern and when you get to the very last section that means um, that you're going to uh, knit across uh, to the last three stitches and then slip one as if to knit and knit two together. So um, go all the way. Basically, I just, I'm just translating this for you. It says three times more. So we did the first set. The second set is between the, um, the stars, which is right here. Okay, so this is the next set and this is three times more. So just to double check ourselves, but this is the first one. This is the starred area, and then it says three times more. That's one, two, three. Okay, do you see how that works? Okay, and then it says um, knit across to the last three stitches. Well, we only had this last stitch section left, so you're gonna go until you have three left. All right, so continue, and we'll meet back in a moment. Pause your video. Okay, we're at our last three stitches. We're going to slip as if to knit and knit these last two together. And then knit those together right there like that. And then pass the slip stitch over. This is very splitty yarn here. Okay, so we've done that. And now all of our sections have reduced by two so where I had 11 in each section, I now have nine. So still the same amount of sections. So um, now this pattern is now telling us that um, we are going to purl across, slipping the markers for row four. So you're gonna turn your work and do that. Now, then after you're done with purling and you're slipping the markers, and we're gonna repeat rows three and four, three and four, um, this many times. Okay, so there's two sets of brackets here. You're going to see this set here and then this one down below, so don't get them confused. Uh, we'll repeat rows three and four. This is how many times you repeat it, but down here it says this is how many stitches are left. Personally, I uh, on a pattern this type, uh, I will um, just look and see how many stitches I have left. But if you're the kind that wants to count how many rows, then you could come over here and make a little hashtag how many uh, times that you've done this in addition to the first um, time. So I'm just going to keep going until I see six. This is um, for the first size is six. If I was doing the next size up for kids, it's 12 stitches left. The next size up is six. And then for the adults, it's six, 12 and six as well. For the repeats, how many repeats you're doing in addition to rows three and four, it's gonna be four, four, and five, and then six, six, and seven. So I would repeat it four more times, and then um, after I repeat four more times, it's gonna have six. So sorry if that's very redundant for you, but sometimes I have to explain it multiple ways for different people who learn differently. So continue this, uh, um, pearl, go ahead and purl across, and then repeat back rows three and four until you get it. 
So pause your video and come back and we will finish this up together. Okay, I'm coming near the end and on my pattern um, for, for my size, I need six stitches. And so I just wanted to show you this last part because I had three stitches in between each one of these. And so I slipped the first and then knitted two together and passed a slip stitch over. So I'm just gonna show you this one more time just in case you have a question like, what do I do when I have you know just a couple in between these stitches? Uh, so I'm going to um, go ahead and do the same. Slip that stitch knit those two together Oop, and I drop them which that can happen but just be sure and insert that back in there okay all right knit those two together okay and then we have one last stitch and again you can tell um, this one because it's a little more elongated so gonna knit that one over and you are ready. Okay, so we're ready to move on. I have six stitches left on my needles. Just wanted to kind of pull this out and show you, see how all the knit twos together um, lean over to the right here. So this is the outside of uh, this one uh, where it's on the very left side of the work. And then these are what they look like on the middle. And then the left will not be um, leaning this is actually your straight edge because um, you had worked in from well on mine was 10 stitches and then we worked down to decrease so yours should start turning in like this so now we're going to look at the pattern and it says that we need to um, not bind off and tells our remaining stitches we're going to cut the remaining yarn and leave 20 inches or 51 centimeters at the end I usually kind of go like maybe a little bit over that um, just to be sure and then uh, we're going to thread our yarn needle and then go in through the remaining stitches and per pull firmly to close and then we'll weave the seam together i've measured out my yarn already i've already cut it off camera <laughs> and i'm going to go in from the back side just because i can see my st stitches better but also the way we weave this in it will be uh, more hidden and uh, I would use a yarn needle that you can see, um, use something that has a contrasting color to your work. Um, it doesn't contrast with all my colors, but uh, eh, it works for me. Okay, so we're gonna weave this on through. So go ahead and pull it through this first stitch and off of your needle, that's one. Go ahead and get rid of that stitch marker. There's two, three, four, five, and the sixth one. And it'll be 12 on two of the patterns and six on the others. So now we get rid of the needles and we're gonna pull this on through, okay? And we're going to um, pull it tight. Okay, so we've pulled it firm and this is just the top of your hat. Okay, do you see how that those stitches are there. So pull as, as uh, firm as you can. And then we're gonna start weaving through. We'll move over to that page. It is page 34 if you're following along in your book. Okay, we're on page 34. This is weaving one stitch in. So with the right sides of both pieces facing you and the edges even, sew through both sides at once to secure the beginning of the seam. Okay, so we're gonna do that part first before moving on. This is just to secure it, so don't overthink it, but just get the first stitches on there. Now, I just pulled through the, these in stitches, so you should be able to tell on yours um, where those are. Sorry, let me fumble and get this into place here. Okay. So here's my first stitch here, and this one, if I had to pull it apart for a second and get it, this one is right here. Okay. And make sure this is all tight. Again. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna pull this on through. Okay, so now we got that in there. Now let's read the second part of the direction. So this is, this is the right side, the knit stitch side. Okay. Pull the second, uh, first and second um, stitches on the front 
edge slightly apart. Notice the bars or horizontal strands between the stitches and you're going to insert the needle up under the bar. See how it's uh, going up under this bar right here? Okay, so there's your line of stitches and then right here. Okay, and then um, under the first and second stitches on the first row and pull the yarn through. Okay. So when you first start getting going, it may take you a moment to kind of get yourself adjusted, but you're just going to go from one side to the next and just continue. So this is the, um, the first stitch here. And if we're going in between the rows, um, kind of have to pull this apart because we've had some decreases. This one is the first, I have a bar right here. Yeah. So this is my first bar. We're going under that and then under this first bar over here, which is going to be a little bit harder to see because of the decrease stitches. So just be consistent. If you're not sure, just be consistent. So pull from the same spot on both. This, this seam is going to hide on the inside. So if you pull too much, it's just going to be to the inside. So now we've pull those apart and then we're just going to continuing um, just going to repeat this process but you're going to insert the needle uh, you're going to match make sure you match the rows and uh, repeat this process about six times on each side and then we're going to pull um, slightly and then we're going to um, we're going to pull here but then just pull apart just a little bit so we can continue to see these and so once we've got about six of these rows done do you see this bar in between here okay so here's your line of the V's and this is in between so we've got this one so we go right and then left or if you're left-handed if you need to do it the um, other way that one was we're knit to do together so we're just gonna pull it through there And you can tell where this one's pulling out from. So we're going to go to the next one. You may have to really look at that. Make sure you're not missing the next bar. Yeah. So that's the next row. I don't want to skip it. That's the second one. And come down to this one, next one here. And don't worry, this this will this will be more forgiving here in a minute. You'll be able to tell better what you're doing. This first part's gonna have to be tight anyway because it's at the crown. Okay. And pull from the next one. I think this is number four. Next bar. Five. Okay, and six. Let's just pull this apart. Okay, we'll pull that in again and come down further. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we're we doing. Okay, and what I've done when I'm seaming together, like on a blanket, I've actually matched up a couple of rows and then put some stitch markers and kind of put them 
together to show myself like where I need to be. So if that helps you in seeming, you could do that as you're learning. Okay. I've got one. I'm going to count the count this to my next row, even though it's not quite a row. If you, if you did the st alternating stripes hat, then you'll be able to really match them up nicer. Uh, it's going to be easier to see than um, if you did the solid or um, you've got one that's variegated like this. So I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, four more bars here. And so I need to fit it into four different spots here um, at this decreased area. So I'm going to make sure I'm just evenly spacing this out. Okay, so now that I've got about six on there, I can start kind of pulling this apart to make sure that I'm I'm going uh, along correctly. And then it wants me to tighten all those six up and then I can do this other one now and kind of keep the stitches a little bit loose so that if I have to readjust, I can do that. Okay, let's start pulling through this again. I'm not fully tightening this up just yet and then I can really see my stitches. Right, we're at the end and I have been working on this stitch, uh, weaving one stitch at a time from the right to the left. I'm on, it's actually what would be the left here. And then on the right is actually where my, um, now it may not be working out this way for you, but on the right is where my cast on stitch was. So I'm actually gonna find that one and I'm gonna run the yarn through there and it doesn't state this on here. This is just one way you can do it. I'll run it through there and then run it back through these last two stitches on the cast on. Okay. Let's pull it on through. Okay. And then I'm going to go back through uh, that way again. And so I'm imitating this uh, stitch kind of going around and then I'm going to flip it to the inside here and go ahead and knit through some of these stitches and through my seam and weave my ends in. I need to get a smaller stitch here. So I've got these um, these tails, and you can just weave them in through the seam up the back, and then weave in your beginning one, weave them in, and then cut them. They're just going to hide in. I would just weave them all the way up to the top and let them hide up at the top. And then when you're done, you've got your little hat all ready. And it's got the pretty decreased crown on it and it is ready to go. So I think this turned out really cute. It's a good little, it's a very simple pattern and you could uh, make it your own by changing some of the stock and net stitch to some pearls or make a little design by using a chart. Um, so anything um, you can do to make it your own is fun too. Thank you again for tuning in to How to Read a Pattern from the I Can't Believe I'm Knitting series, The Basic Hat. This is Kristen at Good Knit Kisses on behalf of Leisure Arts and myself. Thank you again for, to Leisure Arts. Have a great day. We hope you subscribe, like, and give us a comment down below. Please remember that there are links to get your copy of the book and check out the review video coming up. Happy knitting!